Hello listeners, today we will be discussing what is sociology and we will be looking at an introduction to sociology. A normal tendency of men is not to look beyond their everyday world. Men and women are bound by their immediate surroundings and circumstances. They do not realize that what they are, the society of which they are a part is actually affecting what they are in society. They do not realize that their circumstances mirror their reality. And in order to understand what the world around us is and in order to understand how is it that changes are taking place around us in a systematic way, it is important to also associate the changes in society and what is happening around us in the context of history. And the task of sociology is actually to understand these changes, to understand society in a similar systematic manner. To begin with, society was created by people and also it also provided space to the people who created it. So that means society shapes us and we in turn shape the society of which we are a part. The beginnings of sociology can actually be traced to the period of the Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution which started in Europe. I am sure you are aware of this and this was in the 17th and the 18th century. And during that time what happened was that the changes that took place in society were of an unprecedented scale. Never before had there been changes on such a large scale. For the first time you had industrialization, for the first time you had the emergence of cities and obviously you had people migrating in huge numbers to the city. And these were some of the things which attracted many philosophers, many thinkers at that point of time and this was the beginning of sociology. So there were thinkers who decided to try and study these structures and processes of society. So that means Today our task in this lesson will be to study the nature of sociology and also the subject matter of sociology. Now the beauty of sociology as I have already told you is that it appears at every turn whether you are looking at your street corners, whether the phone calls that you are making, whether the internet through which you are probably watching this program, whether it is your family, your friendship, your workplace, all of this is where a sociology appears. And in order to understand the world around us, we should begin to understand this in a systematic way. We should begin to analyze how is it that we are interacting with, another, with one another, how is it that we are attributing social meaning to what we are saying. And it is in this context we as sociologists begin to look beyond the commonly accepted. And in several ways as Anthony Giddens the famous sociologist says, a sociologist is a spy because we are the ones who are forever trying to understand and spy on society around us. Now as far as the beginnings are concerned, I have already told you that the beginnings of sociology can be traced to the renaissance and the industrial revolution which led to changes on an unprecedented scale. And the foremost amongst those who started studying society in this way was Auguste Comte. Auguste Comte as you already know was the father of sociology and he in fact coined the term sociology and he decided that, that sociology should be developed along the lines of the natural sciences. You also have Hobhouse who explained that sociology was actually the interaction of the human mind. You had Park and Burgess in the USA who also believed that sociology is a science of collective behavior. And then you also have the famous sociologist Emile Durkheim who believed that sociology was the study of social facts. Now, so far all the sociologists who had been looking at society looked at society from the point of view of the natural sciences. That means they decided that if, if sociology has to be a science, then it should follow the method of the natural sciences. However, there was a German sociologist Max Weber who was very different from all of them and he, and he thought that since sociology is all about social interaction, since sociology is all about how human beings interact with one another, therefore the subject matter of sociology should be that of social action and the method that we use for understanding again has to be different from that of the natural sciences. And we will do more of this when we do, when you do the chapter on the emergence and the development of sociology. Now, so that means what you are saying here is that as far as the nature of sociology is concerned, it is a scientific discipline. That means it is something which is beyond our values judgments. It is something which involves an objective method of investigation. It is something which involves evaluation of social reality. Science refers to an objective method of investigation. It involves reasoning, it involves logic, 
which contribute to the development of a body of knowledge. So, that means the goal of science becomes to explain why something happens, to make generalizations which contribute to theory building and predict what will happen in the future in light of the available stock of knowledge. Now, with the use of the scientific method of sociology aims to acquire knowledge that is objective free of biases and prejudices. So, that means for us science is theoretical, it is empirical, it is cumulative, it dictates the way that we study society. Now, the way that we look at society is something which is called a perspective. Now, a sociological perspective is a viewpoint for the study of society. Now, in order to understand what a sociological perspective is, let us look at some of the perspectives that is positivism and phenomenology. Now, as the term positivism suggests to you, the term positivism was something which actually came in with the enlightenment, which came in with the end of the dark ages and man was very positive about all changes that were happening around him. And man also for the first time thanks to the development of the natural sciences felt in control of all that was happening around him. For instance, the, the you know uh, with the development of science, you had electricity, you had telephone, you had the development of roads, you had the development of of vaccines. So that means for the first time, man was in control of all that was happening around him, and this is this actually led to the coining of the term the positive phase or the positivist perspective of sociology. Now, the positivist perspective is based on scientific research, verification and validation of collected facts including opinions, attitudes and faith. And the sociologist whose name is associated most with the positivist perspective is actually August Comte and also Emile Durkheim. Now, so that means what we are saying is that a positivist is somebody who uses the method of the natural sciences for the analysis of society. What are the steps that are involved in using the method of the natural sciences? Now, as many of you may have uh, may be familiar with the steps of science, so that means just to briefly recapitulate, if you are a sociologist, the steps as if you are using the positivist perspective and the steps that you would use actually involve identification of the problem, collection of data, maybe developing a hypothesis, analyzing the result that you have retesting the data that you have and then interpreting the data. Now, this is the method which was also used by the functionalists. Now, the functional perspective is again very closely associated with the positivist perspective and Durkheim whom I just referred to as a positivist is also a functionalist. Now, as far as functionalists are concerned, functionalists view society as self-regulating, self-maintaining social systems. The, they believe that society is like a biological organism. Just as in your body parts function in order to maintain the whole, the functionalists also believe that the different parts of society function in order to maintain the whole. So, for example, all the institutions that you have in society, say for example, religion, say for example, marriage, kinship, economic institutions, political institutions, all of these have a specific function to perform in society. And if you are using the functionalist perspective, then you will analyze everything from the point of view of the functionalist perspective. Now, something which is absolutely contrary to the functionalist perspective is the conflict perspective, because as far as the functionalists are concerned, for functionalists there is never any conflict in society. If there is any conflict in society, it is always understood to be temporary and short lived. On the other hand, as far as the conflict theorists like Karl Marx and Ralph Darendorf are concerned, they understood society through conflict and what they believe is, they believe that conflict is something which is inherent and central to all aspects of society and different groups form alliances with one another in order to compete with one another. Say for example, Karl Marx, I am sure you have heard Karl Marx's name in the context of various communist societies, Marxian societies, I am sure you have heard of the name. So, Karl Marx for instance, in his perspective on society focuses on the conflict between the bourgeois that is a capitalist and the proletariat that is the workers, which then leads to change in society. Now, so, that means what we are seeing here is that you may either use the positivist perspective or the functionalist perspective which is closely related to 
the positivist perspective in order to understand society. You may also use the conflict perspective in order to understand society and the conflict perspective mind you is not similar to the positivist perspective, it is nor is it similar to the functionalist perspective. The method of analysis is also very different. An other perspective through which we can study society and which is again very different from the conflict perspective, which is again very different from the positivist and the functionalist perspective is the phenomenological perspective. The phenomenological perspective is something which is closely associated with the method of analysis used by Max Weber and as I just mentioned a little while ago that for Max Weber the task of sociology is to study social action, the task of sociology is to study social action in the context of each and every individual. That means, you do not use the method of the natural scientists. Now, the phenomenologists very much along the lines of Max Weber understand how is it that the world around us is experienced by individuals. That means, you are not understanding society using the method of the natural sciences like you know building a hypothesis, testing, retesting of data, collection of data etcetera. Instead what you are doing is you study society from the point of view of those who are being studied. That means, what you are saying here is that by using various perspectives of sociology whether it is the functionalist, the positivist, the conflict or the phenomenological perspective you are actually studying societies in a very systematic and a scientific way. Now, you know the scope of sociology, what is it that sociologists study using any of the above perspectives that I have mentioned. As a sociologist, you will study social organizations, you will study social structure, you will study social institutions, you will study culture, you will study families, you will study the workplace, you will study medicine, you will look at media, you will look at newspapers, you will look at revolutions, you will look at science, you will look at the development of knowledge, the, all of this becomes the scope of sociology. That means, in short as a sociologist you will look at all that surrounds you, right. Now, if you were to systematically start looking at what is it that each of these things mean, let us just begin with for example, with the social structure. Now, what is the social structure? As the term structure suggests to you, we are actually talking about structured patterns of interaction and interrelations amongst individuals. That means, you are talking about how is it that individuals are interacting with one another. You see, when individuals interact with one another, they never interact with one another in a random way. There are definite rules that you follow, there are definite patterns that you follow. Say for instance, the way that you interact with your friend or for example, the way that you interact with your mother or your father or your brother or your teacher right or your boss, all of these are different ways that in which you are interacting and all of these ways of interaction are not again random, these are again dependent on society, these are again structured through society, right. Similarly, if you were to look at social institutions, now social institutions are again well established ways of doing things, right, well established ways of for example, dealing with people, well established ways for example, which deal with customs, the habits that you have over a period of time. So, that means social institutions are actually procedures and practices and they are an instrument for the functioning of society. Say for instance, if you are interacting with your parents, you are interacting with your parents in the context of the family as a social institution and when you interact with your parents, there is an established way in which you will interact with them. Say for example, you know you could be informal with them, you could fight with them, you could laugh with them, you could joke with them, but can you do the same with your teachers? You cannot, why? Because or with your boss for example, you cannot do that. The reason being that as far as the norms of interaction are concerned, the norms of interaction are again very different, right. So, that means, you are interacting with your teachers in the context of the social institution. Say for instance, if you were to look at religion as a social institution, that would dictate how is it that you are interacting with let us say the priest of your temple or the granthi in the gurdwara or the or let us say the uh, or let us say the priest in a church for example, right. So, all of these are have to do with social institutions, have to do with social structure as well, right. Now, when you are talking about social institutions and you are talking about culture, they do not exist in vacuum, they do not exist in 
you know in let's say for example space not at all in fact they exist within a social space and that social space actually has to do with culture and very briefly culture is actually nothing but a way of life and culture refers to the symbols refers to signs refers to language it becomes your guiding force for everyday life it is transmitted from one generation to another through the process of socialization religion philosophy art science are all a part of culture the language that you use the way that you talk with one another gender number numbers the way that you use numbers the way that you interact with one another whether it's intimate whether it's formal all of those are actually a part of culture the knowledge that you have the way that uh, you know you decide how to interact with people in a particular situation all of that is a part of culture right so that means culture is something which has to do with your material aspects as well as non material aspects you see non material aspects would be values would be the language that you use would be the various symbols of communication that you use for example um, the symbols of communication could be that on certain certain occasions you tend to eat a particular kind of food say for example during holi i'm sure there are special food stuffs that you eat you know for example it could be gujia it could be thandai it could be whatever similarly during diwali again there are special food stuffs that you eat there are certain foods which are associated with feasting certain foods which are associated with fasting say for example if you're a muslim then you would break your fast using dates for instance right so all of those are a part of your material culture apart from food the clothes that you wear the um, you know the internet the uh, computer that you use the telephones that you use the cars that you use the buildings that you live in all of these are the material uh, aspect of culture right so that means as a sociologist by using any of the perspectives that we have used whether you use the phenomenological perspective the conflict perspective the functionalist perspective the positivist perspective or any other perspective i mean sociology is a huge discipline and we really cannot cover everything here with using any of these perspectives you study society in a systematic way so that means what is happening to you as a sociologist is that you are becoming scientific you may be studying phenomenon which surround you and which appear to be a part of the common sense common sense is something which is limited by time and space it is limited by your range of experiences but on the other hand as a sociologist you realize that whatever is happening around the world has an impact on your lives let's say for example if you live in a country uh, which on which america has imposed sanctions then your way of life is going to be influenced by america if on the other hand you are a tribal right now if you are if you belong to a tribal population and the way that you live there that is bound to be influenced by the developmental policies that the government has now all of this means that you as a sociologist begin to look at these things not just from the point of view of the common sense but you go beyond it for instance if you live in a village you tend to accept caste as a part of your common sense but as a sociologist you realize that caste is not a part of the common sense instead caste is something which has to do with the structuring of social relationships caste leads to social discrimination and caste is something which also creates which also leads to a lot of violence and you understand this as a sociologist so your understanding is not based on your immediate surroundings instead your understanding is scientific right so that means you are looking at the world around you not from a common sense perspective but you are going beyond the common sense right the jokes that you say you know the films that you watch all of that becomes a part of your social structure so that means what we are saying here is that as a sociologist you are understanding the world around you in a structured manner and briefly to sum up what i am basically trying to tell you is that sociology is a very interesting field of study and the entire world around you can be studied in a systematic scientific value free without biases way and it is your task as a sociologist to write and understand the world to sorry it is your task as a sociologist to understand the world around you using a systematic and a scientific method of analysis right 
Thank you.